Welcome to this special episode of Talking Prisoner, except we're not talking prisoner today. Theatre <laughs> is back in Melbourne, it's back in a big way, and it's back with an amazing show called Underneath Miss Archer, which is written and performed by Louise Siverson and Peter Horton. Welcome, Louise, for a third time to talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. You. I'm very grateful. Nice to be here. Yeah, no, amazing. So we're going to talk about your new show, Underneath Miss Archer. Now, you did this during COVID. You wrote and started it during COVID. Is that right? We started it through, we actually started it in 2019 and we were to perform it some years ago. But then, of course, you know, this this thing arrived that affected all our lives yeah. and closed the theatre ad infinitum all over the place and everybody's shows went belly up. So we had three attempts through the COVID period to get oh. our show up. And each one of them was slaughtered by, you know, the obvious. And and then I had an injury from another show that I was in. And then the theatre that we were in <laughs> closed. So, but we're here. We're, we're here, here in 2023, bigger and better than ever. So, I think I remember you know, and- when I spoke to you last time, you said you were doing like um, practice over over Zoom with people. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> You know, you know, look, you find any means you can, but I mean, here we are, we're at St. Martin's Theatre in South Yarra at, in the Irene Mitchell studio um, and we, we're into our final week. So, um, you know, you and I are here to chat about this just with only these few performances left. So, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping people come along and enjoy because it's a comedy and it's full of laughs and it's full of love. And, you know, the, just for that period of time, as we were mentioning just before we got going on the interview, it's that lovely thing when you can go to the theatre and just for that period of time, you can forget all your troubles. Definitely. You know, Definitely. it's like a little haven. Now, you and Peter wrote this together. Where did the idea come from? We did. Well, it's a kind of an interesting story because I was asked by another company to direct a comedy and I went to the meeting to do that job, um, which actually never eventuated for the same reasons that we've just discussed. Um, and at the time, the person whom I was having the conversation with said to me, are you and Peter working on anything? Because we're known as collaborators. Yeah. And we weren't, but I said, yes, we were. So I had <laughs> told a tiny little, you know, <laughs> stretch of the truth. And, um, and so began this play because we had to come up with an idea in four days because we were going to pitch it to this wow. company. Wow. And so we sat in a cafe. I rang Peter when I got out of the, the meeting and said, oh, by the way, we've, we're writing a play. And he said, is it going well? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, very well. That's a great <laughs> idea. So we met that night and came up with the bones of what is now underneath Mazarcha. The end we decided, you know, what would, what did we want to look at? And we wanted to look at things that are in the zeitgeist now, which is the, like the idea of cancel culture and trolling online and, and um, public humiliation and all those sorts of things that are very current. And we also wanted, we, we wanted to look at the, the reach of law, um, which is why the Magna Carta um, stream is in the play. And we wanted to look at the influence of ancestry on all of us and how our ancestors uh hold us in their I, I, across time and how we're influenced by them and all of those sort of things mashed together and and we came up with this story and then we decided who did we want to play and for some bizarre reason I have always wanted to play an air hostess <laughs> because I just think there's something fabulous about them and there's something terribly glamorous and old world about flight attendants um that that you know it's that, that it's that that um, possibility of something exciting just about to happen. And they're always terribly gl glamorous and well-behaved and all of that. And you think about their lives when they're not there and you think, what's it like when they're not actually, or when they're in the galley talking about all of us, you know, <laughs> what's it like? <laughs> uh, so that's sort of where it started. Amazing. So I started from a meeting in a cafe. I love it. Um, Peter wrote something about the show. Uh, the show digs hard into the question, can we come back from a mistake? On a long haul flight, flight attendant Kelly Archer does something that she can't undo, and the internet has a field day. The story plays with concepts of Magna Carta, cancellation, and compromise. All this wound tightly into a comedy about how being stuck with family can sometimes suck. Now, cancel <laughs> culture is so big. I mean, do you think people are, are not like coming out and speaking about things now because they're scared of being cancelled or? 
Oh, I think unquestionably. I think I think there's a real danger, and I think there's a, there there is a real danger in a in a true physical sense that one could be injured, uh, or even worse. Um, and so the idea that uh, we can come together and dialogue about important things uh, is losing attraction because people are frightened of what will happen when they meet that situation. And what we wanted to present, because it's so important to us as artists, that we find a place where we can have a conversation, difficult conversation, with people with whom we m might not see the same point of view, but that we can stay in the room and work our way through a conversation and still may not agree, which is perfectly fine. Yeah. But it's about maintaining a civility and a humanness with each other so that we accept we're all here together making the best of this. And we are, we are tasked with the idea of living together as one, yeah. whether we like the, the other person or we don't like the other person, or we like their politics, or we don't like their politics. We have to find a way where we find a humanness within all of that. Otherwise, we're really doomed. And I, I think there's some, you know, that's, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the key um, elements of making art is to find that unification. So our job as artists is also to look at the avenues through which we can find a means by which we could inform one another in a civil, meaningful, kind, constructive way without having to completely change persona, but that we can remain in the room together and, and live with one another and, 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 and find joy with that person, even though they, we may not agree with everything that they're saying or doing. Yeah. So it became a very important uh, question for Peter and I, um, and it became an important question that we wanted to be able to have in a theatrical sense where people can come and view it and they may not agree with everything, but we're, we're, we're placing it in an imaginative circumstance where they can just grasp these ideas and, and wrestle with them in their own minds or in their conversations afterwards with their, with their friend whom they may have come with or their partner or their family or whomever um, and go out into the foyer and really talk about these things. I think it's that, and the theatre can do that so beautifully because it's live. We're there together. We're having the same experience in that singular moment. And it's never going to happen like that again. No, that's right. Definitely. And what's it like each night? Is the audience like a, it's a different atmosphere each night being back in? The totally theater? different. I mean, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about being in a live audience is that you come and you're together, we create the world for that evening. So yeah. each night is completely unlike the previous or, or, or the next that's to come because everybody that's in that house is utterly unique. So yeah. their response to things is utterly unique and the way that they receive the information is utterly unique and, and they have different things that give them pleasure or joy or horror or distaste or whatever. So you're getting this, you know, completely different music every night from the audience, which is fantastic. So you're, you're writing their play and they're writing your play, you know, mm. which, which is great because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. and, and because the play also is very robust physically, both Peter and I don't know what's going to happen either. So, you know, it, it's a strange kind of alchemical mix of who's going to be there and what will happen. Wow. Wow. The reviews are amazing. I read on uh, artshub.com.au, this is a rare kind of play, sparky, fast-paced and funny Siverson is such a wonderful comic actor and shines as Kelly. Her practical, no-nonsense air, supreme self-confidence in her job as head flight attendant and the visible fall from grace we witness as her whole life collapses around her. It's brilliantly done. Oh. That was from Artub. And Kate Herbert, who's a well-known theatre reviewer, also said... Yeah, very, very well-known. Witty, intelligent, audacious and ridiculous. <laughs> We don't read them because they, they, you know, because if you if you if you agree with the good ones, then you've got to agree with the bad ones. So I, my point I haven't seen I any bad ones yet. They're all good. Oh, haven't you? Oh, isn't that wonderful? God, <laughs> I don't read them until the end for fear that I'm going to read something that will spook me. Either way, make me think that I'm I'm better than I am, or make me think that I'm worse than I am. So I just don't. You're, you're isn't amazing. that beautiful that they've had that response? Definitely. And there's one more I'd just like to read from WeekendNotes.com, which is a very big one. Oh yeah. Uh, the storyline is cleverly conceived, highlighting at one level the contrast and another the parallels between the Angus of modern day social media trolling and the historic compulsion mm. to build a foundation in the fast, sorry, face of barriers. There are pronounced transitions between almost farcical comedy and dramatic scenes, a very pleasing balance of light and shade that kept me engaged. 
The comedy is quirky and clever and had me chuckling throughout. She uh, oh. they also said, I feel this is a production that could re readily transfer to theatres in other cities locally and perhaps internationally. So do you have any... Uh, any ambitions to take yeah, it? our wish is to take it overseas, both to New York and to London. Amazing. That would be our wish, um, and and that that's what we're trying to work on, or that not we're trying to work on, but that's what we are working on. Uh, we believe it's it, it it is a production which would have uh, because it speaks to any culture, um, and particularly to cultures that 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 base their um, historical law systems on the Magna Carta, which most Western um, countries do certainly America and, and, and England, where it was produced, um, I think that they would that they would find it really interesting. And so that's, we would like to leverage the show and take it out into the world and um, leverage the play in a general sense, uh, whether Pete and I were in it or we're not in it, but we'd like the, the play itself to have a life so that it can be a, a forum in which people can discuss these difficult things and to look at it maybe from another perspective. Oftentimes, you know, comedy is very helpful to to open people's minds to subjects which can be quite difficult or quite frightening, um, or or in many cases, particularly to do with trolling, very personal. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, which which can um, produce in them, uh, 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 you know, other feelings of of great fear. So I think that that's um, I think it's a valuable document in that way um, that it allows people to. Got, enter into this very difficult subject in a way that leaves them feeling buoyant and alive and and whole yeah. uh, and that's certainly our wish for them fantastic now do you get to go and see the audience after the show do you listen to anything what they're talking about? <laughs> we do largely we've tried to it takes me and pete forever to get dressed down from because we've got you know hair makeup blah 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 um, but we, we what we've taken to doing is putting a coat over our costumes and just going straight out so that people don't have to wait. Um, so we've had the opportunity to have some really fantastic chats and really wonderful responses from people, both friends and total strangers who've come and stayed and wanted to speak to us, which is really unusual and, you know, very moving for us as because, of course, we've, we, the whole show is ours. We made it from nothing and now we're performing it and Pete is also directing it. So um, along with the associate direction of his wife, Anne Browning. So, uh, you know, it's a very personal show for us. So it's great when we go out and you have a conversation with a fa sometimes families. We had two families with their children the other night, which was just when they waited and the children wanted to talk about it. And it was just great, you know. Oh, I mean, you very rarely have that. Well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a, I think you'd need to be sort of 15 or up. You need okay. a certain level of maturity because some of the language is a bit, you know. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard you swear a spicy. little bit. <laughs> it's a little spicy but um you know i think from sort of 15 you'd be aware of those words and you know the, and the way in which of course we're using them you know so uh, i think any younger than that might be probably not appropriate but yeah. you know um uh, but these these kids were sort of late teens you know so and they really want to talk about it um which which, which is fantastic for us as performers that we've, you know, much more older performers talking to these young people about subject matter that's very pertinent to them because they're much more versed on these things than I am. Yeah. But not being somebody who's very, I'm not on social media. I have been recently because of the show, but it's not, it's not a form of communication I'm that um, au fait with because I don't use it that much. Yeah. So it's been really interesting for me because, you know, through the marketing of the show, I've been a lot more involved in it and I can see the reach of it and how people become informed through it and what they use it for. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. And it's, a, it's such a big subject at the moment as well, like bullying oh. and online trolling and, and, you know, yeah. I, I just don't involve myself in you. I mean, you just see these things and just like, whoa, like what people are writing and fighting about. Oh, it's just horrific. Yeah, it's crazy. Horrific. It's a loss of humanity in it. It's a, it's a real loss of civility. You must remember that's a person. Yeah. You know, that's a valuable life regardless. Definitely. You must be careful with each other, you know, yeah. and treat people with respect. Okay, you disagree. By all means, disagree. But threatening people, no, 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 no. no. Now, you and Peter have worked no. together for a long time as well. What's we like? have. We, yeah. we, we, we share a great friendship and we, we share a very sort of unique alchemical um, creative uh, companionship too, which is, which is a real blessing because, the, the, you know, the, 
the, the the journey of this play as it's been with other things that we've produced and other things that have we've made but maybe haven't been made as yet you know it's always peaceful it's always happy it's always collaborative it's always respectful and that that is a great thing to to find someone whom you can have a sense of joy in watching them produce work i'm so enormously proud of him as an artist i find him just genius in his in his capabilities and potential so to have the companionship of that for me is is really a, like a, a a very strong ballast for me it's wonderful i feel very grateful amazing i can't wait to see it now tickets are available at underneath missarcher.com that's the website to buy the yep. tickets and it's it's ms so it's ms it's not ms so it's underneath ms archer all in lowercase dot com and on that you can push the little red book now button and it'll take you straight to try booking and you can just buy your tickets there and at the moment we're doing um a 20 percent off if you punch in the code night as in k-n-i-g-h-t off all together in uppercase you can get 20 percent off your tickets for this final week put all that on the comments section of this video and there's also a saturday and sunday matinee performance during the day there is this weekend there is we do a, a two o'clock on saturday and our final show is three o'clock on sunday and we would love 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 yes. love to see you all there We'd love to pack this show out all this week at irene mitchell studio st martin's theater at 44 st martin's lane south yarra underneath misarcher.com I can't wait to come and see it. And I know you're flat out, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much for your time. And um, thank you, Matt. See you this week. Yeah. Blessings on you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. That was a special episode of Talking Prisoner. Please like and share this video everywhere you can. This episode will also be available across all the podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcast from. And please, please go to the website underneath misarcher.com and book your tickets. It'll be a great show. I'll see you all soon.